Because of Adam, we were expelled from Eden, the garden of paradise. We, therefore, cannot experience paradise in this world. In fact, a way of understanding that expulsion is that the entire earth was the garden and that it was no longer a paradise because of sin. No, paradise for us is what is promised to St. Dismas on the cross. Today, you will be with me in paradise. It's heaven. On earth, we will not experience Eden, we will only experience Gethsemane. In fact, the reason that many people reject God or rationalize their own form of Christianity is because they cannot reconcile their pain with what God has revealed. And we see this very beautifully expressed by St. Paul, uh, sadly expressed really, in the first chapter of his first epistle to the Corinthians. He says, For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. That's the gospel, just as a note there. Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the wisdom of God, and the power of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Therefore, in this world, if it is truly impossible to avoid the cross, then we have two options. Like the Jews and the Greeks, we can oppose the cross of Christ, denying its power, or we can embrace the cross. And these are the only two options that we have. And there are two ways that we can consider embracing the cross. The first is to embrace the truth of the cross, the passion and death of our blessed Lord, because of our sins and for the sake of reconciliation with God. But another way to embrace the cross is to embrace the suffering in our lives, which because of our union with Christ in his mystical body, the church, is salvific. If Christ suffers in us because of our union with him, and his suffering saves the world, then our suffering, united to his, saves the world. Many people use their pain and suffering to accuse God of being far from them. It's a temptation that all people face, and that maybe even some of you are falling into. Holy David the King writes in Psalm 34, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. God is near to us in our sorrow and in our pain. He is right there in the middle of it. Where was Jesus when my father died, for example? The same place he was at the death of St. Joseph, right there at his side. Why didn't Jesus keep my friend from dying? For the same reason that he did not let Lazarus live, because he knew he would one day raise him up. Why does God allow me to suffer these migraines, these back problems, this arthritis? The same reason that he was crowned with thorns, whipped almost to death, and dies nailed hand and feet to the cross. God doesn't want us to suffer. Suffering is a result of sin and dominion under Satan, uh, starting with Adam, which that sin gave the devil. But in this life, suffering is unavoidable. The point of verse 18 of Psalm 34, the Lord is near the brokenhearted, is that God does not always cure us miraculously. Instead of taking away the pain, he enters the pain. And no one was ever in more pain than Jesus Christ in his sacred passion. If God is there in our brokenness, and we do everything to ignore or distance ourselves from that woundedness, 
that we are distancing some, ourselves from where God is in our lives. If we try to distance ourselves from the pain that we are in and our woundedness, then we are distancing ourselves from the place where Jesus Christ is in our lives. And that is what makes the cross far more than a matter of obedience and pain, but about love. God, who cannot suffer, who cannot die, takes a human nature on himself so that he might suffer and die. And not only to satisfy justice, Jesus could have satisfied, made satisfaction for sin with the smallest drop of his blood. No, he enters into our suffering and experiences all of it. There is nothing that he did not suffer in body or soul for our sakes. There is not one pain that we cannot embrace as the cross of Christ if we are willing. Are you willing? 